Welcome to part one of the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop. This is the first in a series of video tutorials related to complex document formatting in Microsoft Word. Now, some of the assignments in this class will require you to be able to accomplish complex document formatting. So, for those of you who are already experts in Microsoft Word, this will be a breeze. Those of you who have never really delved into the advanced features in Microsoft Word, though, will be surprised at just how easy complex document formatting can be. As an overview, in this video, I will be discussing the Microsoft Word 2013 interface and how to create document sections and page breaks. If you haven't already, you should download the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop document from the course website. And we'll begin by turning our attention to the Microsoft Word interface. Go ahead and open up that Microsoft Word 2013 workshop document that you have downloaded from the course website, and that's where we'll begin. You'll notice that in the Word interface, as you can see on the screen, uh, it looks very similar to the Word 2007 and Word 2010 in terms of using the ribbon interface across the top. The ribbon interface is really nice because it provides you with the most commonly used features under each category. So you can see across the top, you have Home, Insert, Design, Page Layout, References, Mailings, Review, and View. Now I have a couple of extras based on add-ins that I have installed in my copy of Microsoft Word. Uh, most likely you will not have those unless you have the same add-ins installed on your system. Back to the ribbon interface, the ribbon provides you with the most commonly used tools under each category. So you can see here on the Home tab, you're going to have very commonly used features in any word processor. Things like copy and paste, all of your font settings. Uh, we also have things like uh, how you want your text aligned. Do you want it aligned left, center, right, or justified? Text spacing. Do you want your spacing to be set at uh, 1 or 1.15, 1 1.5 lines, double spaced, 2.5 spaced, triple spaced? All of those options are very easily accessible in the paragraph options. You'll have things like tab settings, uh, bullets, and list numbering, even multi-level list numbering. And then uh, to the right is something that most people have never delved into, and that is the styles uh, feature of Microsoft Word. We're going to get into that in one of the coming workshop videos. On the Insert tab, you'll have the options for inserting document sections, which we'll get into in this workshop, inserting pictures, shapes, smart art, charts, screenshots, uh, all of those sorts of things, um, even text boxes for more desktop publishing type things rather than word processing. In the Design tab, you'll have a lot of options for holistic document formatting, which we won't deal with in this class. Under Page Layout are your settings for setting your margins and uh, spacing for your document. Under References, Microsoft uh, Word has a pretty basic reference manager. For most quick and dirty assignments, this will be acceptable for citing your sources in APA or MLA format. I do prefer APA. Uh, for more professional things, it really does not have the formatting exactly correct. So for example, if you're preparing a document to submit to a journal for publication or something else where style is really, really important, you're probably going to want to either do the formatting manually or use a plugin like I do, uh, like EndNote X6 or Zotero or something else that is constantly updated with the latest specifications for the styles. We're not going to be talking about mailings, but if you ever do complex mail merges or things like that where you want to print uh, 100 copies of the same document but the uh, name and address and maybe some other key information will be different for each, uh, this is where you would go to do that kind of thing. We're going to be talking later about the review tab when we start getting into the peer review workshops, but this is where you can comment and mark up a document for another person to uh, get feedback or for you to provide changes and then 
then uh, the other person can look at the document and either accept or reject those changes that you have recommended. Finally, the View tab gives you options to change the way that you are viewing the document that you have open in Microsoft Word at the time. So in this first video, uh, I've provided you with an overview of the Microsoft Word 2013 interface. Uh, one thing that I do want to let you know that a lot of people have not discovered is that on these ribbons, only the most commonly used items under each category are listed on the ribbon and are available via the buttons. So for example, for fonts, you only have the option to change the font, change the uh, size, uh, deal with the font formatting, some color things, and then increase font, decrease font, uh, set the type of capitalization that you'd like. Now, there are lots of other options related to font that Word can do. And if you want to get to those additional options, those are always found through the uh, advanced font dialog box. And all of these uh, you'll see on the Home tab typically have an advanced box where you can really have full control over that particular area of your document. So uh, with all of these, if you're looking for a setting or there's something you want to change and you can't find a button that will do it, it's almost always going to be in the advanced options window that you get to by clicking on the little arrow in the bottom right corner of that ribbon section in the Word interface. Let's go back to the Home tab and I want to talk a little bit about uh, document sections. That's what the primary goal of this particular video is, is to teach you how to set up document sections properly in Microsoft Word. Now, uh, you might think that, oh, document sections, that's really easy. Uh, but a lot of people do it incorrectly. So I'm going to show you the right way to do it. If you've been doing it this way your whole life, congratulations, that's great. Uh, if you haven't, this is the way that you should set up document sections. I want to first talk about page breaks because one thing that I see often is that students, both undergraduate and graduate, have never learned to use page breaks appropriately. And so what I'll see is in a document like this, let's say I want this new paragraph to be on the next page, what people will often do is go to the top of the line and hit enter a number of times until it gets to the part of the page that they want. This is absolutely the wrong way to format a document in Microsoft Word. What you should do, rather than entering all of those extra carriage returns, is insert a page break. And, and to do that, there are a couple of ways. I like to use the keystroke, which is control enter, press control and enter, and you will have a page break inserted for you that will just automatically break uh, immediately after that to the next page. The other thing you can do is go to the page layout tab, check breaks, and insert a page break. And you'll notice that that does the same thing as the control enter keystroke that I showed you just a second ago. So whenever you want a document uh, to break to the next page immediately, rather than inserting carriage returns, throughout the document, you should just insert page breaks. Now, you'll notice that on my copy of Word that I can see those page break characters. If you can't see those right now, whenever you're doing complex document formatting, the first thing you should always do is turn on hidden characters. And that's right here on the Home tab under Paragraph. It looks like a paragraph symbol. If, you, if that is off, you will not see those hidden characters. So turn that on and it will allow you to see all of the things that Word sees. If you've ever had a document that had a formatting problem and you just could not figure out why it was doing what it was doing, chances are you'd be able to figure it out much more quickly by turning on hidden characters. So throughout this exercise, I will always have the hidden characters and field codes turned on because those help you understand how Word is breaking up your document. 
So that's how to use page breaks. Uh, let's move on and let's talk about using section breaks. Now, uh, a page break tells Word, I want the content in my document that immediately follows this page break to be on the next page, and that's great. What I want to teach you next is about section breaks. Now what section breaks do is they allow you to tell Word there is something fundamentally different about the content that comes after this, so I want you to treat it almost like it's an entirely new document. And so the really cool thing with section breaks is that by using them appropriately, you can do things like have headers and footers that are different for different sections of your document that we'll cover later. You can also do things like have some pages in your document that are landscape versus portrait orientation or that have different margins. Maybe you want uh, one part of your document to have different margins compared to the rest of it. With section breaks, you can make this happen. And with any complex document, it's really important that you have your section breaks set appropriately. So the first thing we're going to do is create a few document sections in this document to provide us with a title page. We're going to also have an executive summary, the main body of the document, and then finally a references section at the end. So let's start and we will just put in our dummy text for our title page. This is an article that has been copied from Wikipedia to provide you with text to practice document formatting. This is the Wikipedia entry uh, about Bill Gates. So we're going to just title this document Bill Gates. Uh, we're going to give it a subtitle, an article from Wikipedia. That's where it came from. And I'm going to add formatted by and my name. You can do the same thing. So since the title page is its own page, uh, we want to add a document section after the title page for the remainder of the document. So to do that, again, we're going to go to the page layout tab. We're going to click on breaks and you can see you have page breaks here but we want a section break. We don't just want to break to the next page, we want to break to the next page and tell Word that I want to be able to control the formatting of this page separately from all the other pages in my document. So we're going to do a section break next page. Now you'll see if I view this as a, a whole page at once, it's hard to read the text there, but you can see that I now have a section break next page and all of the following content in the document appears uh, on the next page, starts on the next page. So I'm going to delete the extra carriage return and go back to uh, my page width zoom. So I have the introduction. We're going to actually change this, although it is an introduction, we're going to pretend as though it's an executive summary. So I'm just going to change that text right there. And the executive summary in a professional report typically uh, gets its own page or pages. And then the remainder of the report will begin on a new page. So that means that right here, uh, in front of early life, we need to have another section break next page. So we're going to go back to page layout, breaks, section break, next page. And so as you can see, we now have our executive summary on a page goes down to early life. Now, the majority of this we're going to treat as the body of our report about Bill Gates. And so we're going to go all the way down to the end until we start seeing the references section. References are going to be their own section, so we're going to put our cursor at the start of the references line and we're going to do that one more time. Insert breaks, section breaks, next page. So now we have our references uh, on their own, in their own document section. If we go to view, and I want to view multiple pages, I can now quickly scroll through the document and see my section breaks. So on the first page, that's my title page, I have a section break, I have the executive summary on its own page, then we have the bulk of the document, and then finally another section break next page before the references. 
So these are all of the document sections that we'll need for this particular workshop video. This concludes part one of the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop. Once your document is broken into sections appropriately, continue with part two of the workshop.